Hello, uh, I'm Richard Palethorpe and I work in quality engineering, uh, primarily on the Linux test project. Um, and with me is Cyril Horobis, who's also the uh, maintainer for the Linux test project and works in quality engineering. Uh, this talk is on control groups, um, what testing we currently have, uh, both in the LTP and in the self-tests and any other testing we have set up, um, and what our future plans are for that. Uh, Sebastian Halad was also supposed to be in this talk, but he's currently moving house. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, so what is a C group? Um, I think this is actually less obvious than it first appears. Uh, people usually say it's for controlling resources, um, which is quite abstract. Uh, so from my point of view, uh, a C group is a collection of groups and processes that form a hierarchy. Um, so each group can contain more groups or it contain processes. Uh, it can't contain both uh, except for the root C group. Um, so the root C group can contain both, which complicates matters a little bit. Um, and you can connect controllers to this hierarchy. Um, and the hierarchy is represented in SysFS as uh, directories. You have one directory for each group, um, and then you have files for each controller uh, parameter. Um, and controllers take advantage of this structure and present their properties as files in, the, in each directory. Um, so the API is quite simple uh, from a sort of a very high level point of view. You just write and read from files. Um, controllers themselves, uh, in theory, grant access to certain resources or restrict them. So for example, you have the memory controller, which grants certain amounts of memory or controls when a process will begin swapping its memory out. Um, and this controller interface, there's a version one and version two of the APIs, uh, which is a problem for us when we're testing it because we need to test both versions. Okay. So, in version one, um, you can have multiple hierarchies. So you can have multiple trees of groups and processes can be in more than one tree. Uh, and you can have at most one hierarchy per controller. So each controller can have its own hierarchy. Um, and then in V2, you only have one hierarchy, which simplifies matters a lot, uh, unless you need to support both versions, in which case you then need to deal with having um, either many hierarchies or only one. Uh, there's a further complication that there is a slightly different API when you want to put threads into a you want when you want to have threads um, from the same process in different groups. Uh, each controller's interface is different. Um, yeah, the controllers themselves, um, because the resources they control are very different. So, for example, the CPU controller has very different properties than the memory controller because they're fundamentally different things. Um, the API for each controller is completely different, except for the fact that it's all based on the file interface. Um, and they all use the same hierarchy. Um, 
the controllers differ between version one and version two in what features they expose. Um, so in version one, you get um, some extra options. And then in version two, you lose those options, but gain others. And also the interface between the versions is um, different. So you can write different information to each, to the same file in different versions. So we have a bit of an issue, which is we already have a number of tests that are based on version one. Um, and we want to use these on version two. But uh, because the many of the options arbitrarily changed, uh, often just in name, but also in other ways, uh, we need to have a compatibility layer uh, within the Linux test project, which will allow the test author to say, well, I want these options on this control group. Um, and I just want to specify them in a fairly unified way between versions because in the Linux test project, we support, we try to support practically any setup. Um, so we're not tied to a particular kernel version. You can run the tests going back to kernel 2.6 probably. Um, and also we need to support all of the different configurations of C groups you can have. Um, so system D, for some reason mounts both versions of v1 and mounts both uh, v1 controllers and v2 controllers at the same time or at least mounts an empty v2 hierarchy and the v1 controllers um, so there's lots of different options with how you can configure c groups how you can mount them and set up this hierarchy you can mount all v1 controllers on a single root which is similar to the v2 setup um, or you can mount uh, one controller per hierarchy, or you can mount multiple controllers on a hierarchy. So you can have an arbitrary number of controllers in each hierarchy. Um, and then of course you can have the V2 hierarchy and you can actually have an empty V2 hierarchy with no controllers attached. Um, or you can have a controller, or you can have one controller, for example, in V2, and then have all the other controllers mounted on a variety of V1 hierarchies. Yeah, and typically C groups are managed by system D, uh, on SUSE at least, or by some other daemon system manager daemon and we can't take over that and start unmounting all of the hierarchies and all of the controllers doing that kind of thing we need to work within the setup that we currently have when you run ltp um, otherwise we'd have to require that anyone that runs the linux test project configures the system especially for ltp and uh, we don't even want to do that ourselves, never mind requiring that any user of the, the project should do that. Um, we don't want to start uh, telling system D not to mount anything, that kind of thing. Uh, we just want to work with whatever the um, product presents. So we came up with a library within the Linux test project, which tries to present a unified interface to both versions v1 and v2 of c groups and will scan the current system find where controllers are mounted and allow the test author to add the test process to one or more of those controllers um, and whether or not this is a good idea is still open to debate, but um, so far it's worked. Okay, so we mount, so we scan the system for the mounted controllers um, and 
create lists of where each controller is mounted. Uh, if we can't find a where a controller is mounted, then we'll try to mount it, which obviously requires uh, privileges. Um, you can actually run the LTP without privileges. Uh, so that won't always work. Um, and we create our own LTP hierarchy within the current um, hierarchy. So usually we'll just mount um, a special LTP C group on the root node and um, we'll mount one LTP hierarchy, sorry, we'll add one LTP uh, hierarchy to each existing hierarchy, each existing root. And um, we generally try to emulate V2 behavior on any of the possible V1 configurations. So as far as the test author is concerned, um, they just interface with a single hierarchy and underneath we do all the work to add uh, the process to the LTP hierarchies we've created and uh, find where each controller is located and update its options when we want to change a C group option. And you can use this without privileges if a system has already created the LTP group for us. So you can run the tests without uh, admin privileges. Okay, so this is an example of what uh, a test would look like using the API. Um, in the LTP, you have kind of like a declarative structure for each test. So we have our test struct, which um, the LTP runtime will read and find uh, how to run the test. So we have our setup function where we require the memory C group or the memory CG. Um, and when we call this function, uh, We'll try and scan the system, find where memory controller is located, uh, create all the necessary hierarchy. Um, and then we get a, a, an object which represents uh, the LTP C group. Uh, I should mention each test gets its own C group and it's possible for the test author to build on that hierarchy and specify um, more groups that are embedded within that initial test C group. Um, and then we can move the current process to that C group, uh, set the maximum allowed amount of memory on the C group that we're currently in, you know, do whatever. Um, and then we can do the actual test under these uh, restrictions that we've just specified. Um, and then when we're finished with the test, we can call cleanup and the LTP runtime will move um, any sessors into, a, into another C group, which we just call drain, uh, move everything out to deconstruct everything in the order it was created uh, so that we can clean up the C groups without getting into um, situations where you have a process which is lingering in a C group and therefore blocking the destruction of the C group. Uh, we handle all of that within the library. Okay, so between versions one and two of the uh, controllers, um, a lot of features were retained from V1, but the property names were changed, uh, sometimes to better things, sometimes to worse, in my opinion. Uh, it seems rather arbitrary in a lot of cases. Um, so we've set up a mapping where V2 names of properties will be mapped to V1 where possible. This isn't always possible. Um, some files were actually merged in 
uh, v2 so where you used to have two separate files you now have one file with two columns in for example um, and there's other changes in semantics um, for example uh, memory max now accepts a uh, string which i think is just max which specifies the maximum value whereas in v1 it never accepted that value um, we don't currently try to emulate uh, missing behavior from v1 or v2 we just have ad hoc uh, bits of logic in the tests where necessary to do something slightly different either on v1 or v2 um, the test author can find out which version of c groups the controller is mounted on okay uh, and these are currently the tests where we started using these uh, this api there are more tests that need to be converted um yeah these cpu set ksn ohm uh, these are quite old tests madvise 06 is also quite old um Advise 06 is quite a productive test that's found a lot of bugs upstream, usually that have nothing to do with the original uh, testing of will need. And CFS bandwidth is also a new one that I added uh, to reproduce a scheduler bug uh, to do with C groups. And that's also, as well as reproducing the original bug, has also found another bug upstream as well so quite productive okay so i suppose now i will hand over to cyril so if i can get the right to change slide that would be awesome yeah thank you so and why we are doing all the stuff because the main problem is that even among our products we have different uh, combinations of V1 and V2. Uh, and basically, we have only uh, C group version 2 only system, which is the SAP flavor, where we are currently running self tests to test the workload memory protection. But <clears throat> apart from that, the coverage is uh, quite since this is basically it uh, we have ltp test cases for about half of the controllers for the version one but uh, once we switch to version two in subsequent uh, SLE versions it will we will end up with no or nearly none coverage and the self-test does not cover that much either basically the only things that the self-test covers is some features from the core and then the memory controller which is quite useful for the workroom memory protection but uh, for nothing else so <clears throat> here's the state a little more verbosely describes basically uh, the core features are mostly covered by the self-test at the moment but there are some missing bits as well for instance, uh, the extended attributes on C group files are only covered in LTP and currently only for version one. And the controllers are, well, in much worse state. We, we have CPU uh, controllers that used to be called CPU Act and CPU for version one in LTP. The code is slightly messy and needs to be cleaned up and then converted to the C group library. The memory controllers have test both in LTP and in self test, and the LTP needs to be obviously cleaned up and rewritten to the ver uh, to the library so that we cover both version one and version two. Uh, there is no code for IO controller, and used uh, there used to be some code for IO throttle controller that was never upstream in LTP maybe we can base something on that uh, we have quite nice test cases for the pit uh, 
controller in LTP, but that's again for version one only. And yeah, we have CPU set test cases in LTP that are very complex and extensive, and they are doing quite interesting stuff, but uh, again for version one only. And uh, some controllers would be very difficult to cover. For instance, the RDMA would require a complex setup. So I doubt that we will test these unless there is a request from our customers. So about the future plans, the first thing that has to be done is to convert the LTP test cases to the Cgroup library so that they could be run on both on version one and version two. And this is really needed because we will maintain uh, the products which have version one, version two split on the system for another 10 years at least. Uh, the, the another question if we should port some of the self-test code to LTP because we would get uh, more coverage for the uh, memory contro controller since that would allow us to run it on version one as well. And of course, if we have more time, we will try to write more test cases from scratch, but I'm not, not sure how many we will manage. And yeah, let me finish with the questions for the audience. Is there anything that we missed? Is there any other C group test suite? Because apart from the self test, I wasn't being able to Google anything else. And also, what what is important to test, and what are uh, what are our blind spots? And that's it, I guess. Anybody has any ideas? Maybe I have one question. So if I understood right with the C group library, you basically mount the controllers in V1 hierarchy and like even the V2 calls you simulate as V1, yeah? Uh, we do not mount anything most of the time since it's already mounted on the system. Oh, I see. So you, yeah. you basically, so if it is mounted as V2, then you will test on V2. And you will not of do course. the like compatibility translation. Sure. Ah, okay. Luis has a question in the chat. Like, oh. How long does it take to run we... all C group tests today? I guess that we do not run everything because some of them are not as a real reliable as we would like, and I, I think it's something about fifteen minutes. And it will, it will probably be longer if we manage to fix all the tests we have. We basically, Luis is asking again about the failure rate. We basically disabled, I guess, half of the LTP test cases currently because there was, there was quite big failure rate. So yeah, we we run about half of them that are mostly green, I guess ninety nine percent of the time. But I guess the f yeah. failure rate is mostly like false positive, yeah. So the test can fail, although the kernel is fine. That's yeah. why you disable this test. Yeah. So I, I yeah. guess Luis was more asking about false negatives, but yeah, like tests which fail only rarely. The out of memory killer tests are notoriously unreliable in the sense yeah. that, uh, yeah, they often fail and it's nothing to do. It's not, it's not a kernel bug in a clear yeah. cut way. I mean, there's always an argument about whether those cases could be handled better, but it's usually something that nobody has an answer to in the uh, out of memory situations. At least that's my impression. I guess that we used to 
to have. Uh, Luis is asking about about if there are bugs for the failures. I guess that we used to have open bug reports for for this in our bugzilla, but uh, I'm not sure that we managed to arrive to any other conclusion that, that basically uh, figuring out anything out of memory is unreal unreliable from the start and we are not able to really assume anything about these states once kernel gets to low memory it's unpredictable at best yeah and the, the if i remember correctly the type of bug that it was was um was the kernel thrashing so just getting stuck in a situation where it can't free up more memory and um i don't think this scenario was that realistic either it was setting configuration in such a way that yeah you get thrashing and there might be a theoretical way to fix it but it's not really practical so yeah we there's, there's a lot of tests we have where it's not completely clear if the test is wrong or the kernel's wrong um I guess there will be some bugs uh, in Bugzilla somewhere. If you type in the OOM test names in, you might get some results, but they may have also been closed uh, as being happening. Hello. Uh, who, uh, okay, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, so thank you for the talk. I think uh, there is uh, much useful information. Uh, I, I go through my notes, or uh, I will start with the last slide. Uh, you were asking, or you were talking about uh, some other C group test suite. Uh, so I remember you mentioned the LTP and uh, kernel self tests. Uh, those are the two that I am aware of as well. I know that. Uh, System B has also some test cases uh, focused on CGROs, but it's rather testing the System D infrastructure that is properly setting the attribute. But I think it's not uh, checking whether whether the control is actually uh, enforced. Uh, you also asked about uh, converting self-tests into LTP. Uh, that is an interesting thought because I think currently the self-test at least in Slash, are not run, or at least uh, uh, I think there were some discussions uh, about uh, WMP uh, that they should be run for that, but I think that's still work in progress. Or yeah, like the, we already do that. That was somewhere in the middle of the slides. We use the memory C group test suite for the uh, SAP flavor. Yeah, so so I, I think uh, the usefulness of that would be that, uh, like converting from soft test to LTP, that I, I assume that it would be ran more frequently so that the test uh, would be actually testing. Yeah, because we cannot run self test on anything else than the SAP flavor, because everything else we have is combination of version one and version two. Yeah, it's actually um, by default in, I think, most products. We actually have both the V1 and V2 hierarchies mounted at the same time, uh, but with all the controllers on V1. So you can't actually use the V2 hierarchy because there's no controllers available to it, but we have both mounted at once, which especially confuses um, the system. And yeah, that's, that seems to be the norm, actually. That's also the norm in Ubuntu and other distributions. So, yeah. yeah this, this norm is actually the, the, the strategy of system D, basically, that supports either all controllers uh, V1 or all controllers uh, V2. Yeah, so basically, if you try to run self-test on anything else, then the SAP flavor, it gives up. That's, that's the reason why we started uh, the LTP library, because we have to support combination of version one and version two in, well, 
either everything on version 2 or version 1 or any other combination because the systems out there are still today mostly combination version 1 and version 2. I think that the latest yeah. Debian finally switched to version 2 only, but that's only the latest release. And I guess the next sleeve would be version 2 only as well, but we are still years from that. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if uh, talking about V2 only, if, uh, if uh, that's what we really can expect uh, in our targeting. But yeah, uh, for example, Tumbleweed is by default V2. I'm not sure how the LTP applies to that, but okay, well, let me go through my notes. Uh, or yeah, you asked what is important to test. Uh, yeah, that is. Uh, that is a good question, actually. Uh, yeah, obviously, I would say it's important to test the things that our customers use or uh, things that are hard to discover. Uh, I will get to that later. Uh, for example, you mentioned that RDMA controller has zero coverage. And I think, yeah, like I think that that uh, maps uh, the state of the usage, but uh, yeah, I don't have exact information. So I think uh, that like mostly used controllers are the CPU controller, memory controller, uh, CPU set controller, and uh, uh, block I/O controller. I think, uh, but uh, yeah, with more represent or with more use of the Kubernetes and uh, container products, we may see perhaps also see uh, it's not exactly related to controllers, but there is the BPF, eBPF uh, programs that can be attached to C groups, and there are various programs for network or various other events. So that might be possible. Like we might see some cases with that as well. And yeah, there are controls that I didn't, controllers that I didn't mention, and I think because that they are not so important, but yeah, I don't have a hard data for that. Uh, yes, and uh, blind spots. Uh, what actually what surprised me, uh, it's a blind spot, or, uh, is that there are no tests, or I'm not aware of the CPU controller actually, like the BFS. Uh, uh, sorry, CFS bandwidth control. It's uh, the recent test, uh, which, uh, as was mentioned, was pr proved useful already. Uh, but I think there are no other tests for the CPU controller. And this would also fit into the category where this, for example, if, if the weights or the fairness of the scheduling is not honored, so the, it might not be obvious at first sight to the, to the users. They think that they configured something and then they realize maybe on some long term or in some specific situations, it actually doesn't work. So I, I think this is like a thing that uh, is not covered at all. Like if, if the, 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 the priorities between C groups are somehow correctly, correctly and uh, precisely uh, realized. And uh, this might also apply in a sense to IO controller, but there it's I think more difficult than with the CPU controller. Yeah, I think um, within the LTP, at least, that was the first test which used the CPU controller, I think. I think there are um, some old uh, CPU test cases written by IBM in combination of Shell and C, but I think that's exactly the uh, these broken tests that we have disabled because they were not producing reasonable results. So we have to clean that up and do something about it yeah i'm not sure i mean with things like testing whether or not um processors actually receive the timeshare that they should um i believe some of the old old tests were trying to do that but were using faulty logic so they weren't really testing anything uh they're basically smoke tests because they yeah, weren't actually verifying the behavior. And that returns us to the presentation that Michal Kubeček has with all that fancy statistics. We would have to do that exactly. 
Yes, which I, th I think is very difficult in uh, functional testing. Uh, mm. We need a, a clear failure scenario. Yeah, actually, for that matter, like this touches kind of the IO controller, but part of also other controllers. Like in performance team, we do plan to do some amount of performance testing involving C groups. Uh, and we also have a like long term plan of implementing some tests with IO controllers because it's really more like more than a functional testing i agree that it's like a performance testing yeah so probably you want to get some baseline basically understand how the system behaves and then compare against the different product and if it differs too much then you know raise a flag that there may be problem happening it's not like that you can easily tell pass fail because you know there are various uh there are various parameters, let's say, which influence the results, like including hardware setup and uh, the exact workload and stuff like that. So it's rather difficult to like say pass fail just based on the one test results. Like you well, really have to compare. It can thing. be done somehow, I guess, if we, for instance, saturate the CPUs on the machine and we set it to distribute it between processes evenly, then we can check if this process has got somehow even um, CPU time or, or something like that. It would be very basic, but it would at least show that it's not horribly broken. Yeah, so we I guess you can get basic tests like this, for example, with CPU. Like with IO, it's even more complicated there. Yeah? Uh, and even with CPU, like if the workload starts to be more realistic, like with multiple processes which are communicating and stuff like that, then it suddenly starts to be very dependent sure. on the particular scheduler decisions. And then you will, like, you have to be really careful to, like, filter out, like, a harmless noise from real problems, yeah. <laughs> well, we can, we can, uh, I mean, extremely broken scenarios, we can definitely test for that. Like, if you set 50-50 balance and one, process never gets any cpu time so we, we can test that stuff easily because then we don't need to worry about um like how many standard deviations we consider a failure we just say okay well that process never even ran or you know uh that um process never got any io bandwidth so we know it's definitely broken and that stuff does occasionally happen um so we'd at least catch that stuff uh, but when it comes to making sure that everything's fairly scheduled um i think it's too too much of a performance issue for us to handle in functional testing but we can definitely do something on that I guess if there are no more questions, then thank you very much for the talk. And yeah, see you everybody in the next session. Thank you.